Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. Hope you're doing well, fine and dandy. You've got a busy, busy day ahead for us all. Um, morning, Kay. How you doing, mate? Good morning, all. Good morning, Ryan. Yeah, I'm doing all right, mate. Ready to rock and roll. Finally, we are going to see the real start of the week, I trust. Yep, we shall see. We shall see. Uh, right, lots to get through, um, lots happening, so uh, lots to look forward to. So let's get stuck right into it. Uh, in China, apparently two MPC members have said they want more party control over the PBOC. Uh, they want to get their fingers deeper into those guys. Uh, they're supposed to be independent, but this is China, so uh, I'm not sure how independent they really are anyway. Uh, but they want more control. Uh, PP, look, PBOC Governor Pan, meanwhile, has said China has a rich monetary policy tools at its disposal and there's still room for cutting the RRR. It says monetary policy will promote a mild rebound in consumer prices. Uh, so potentially teeing up more RRR cuts to come. Over in Japan, Toyota has said that uh, they're going to make its wage offer to the Labour Union in its next meeting, 13th of March. It's confirmation of uh, pretty much what uh, we already heard anyway, putting a big fat circle around that date uh, for all things Japan, BOJ, the whole lot. It's going to be a big old day next week. Um, there's been a ton of sources stuff coming out uh, ahead of the BOJ meeting in that busy week next week. Uh, we've had sources saying that they're likely to maintain their forecast for a moderate economic recovery, uh, according to some sources, and they're going to be seen revising down their assessment on consumption and output at the March meeting. Uh, so it's some... Uh, then we had a piece from Gigi saying that, uh, or Gigi saying that some attendees are likely to say that lifting negative interest rate is reasonable at the BOJ's March policy meeting. Um, now, I just want to maybe clarify that headline. That doesn't mean they're going to want to hike at the next meeting, um, but just to say that they're looking at potentially hiking um, and announcing that at the March meeting. Um, so that's uh, a few sources pieces coming out there. Kay, are they sending out a few uh, air balloons, or uh, yeah. a lot of yeah. it? We a lot of it we already know. We know it's all coming around, uh, coming to a head at this time of year, anyway. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of those articles coming out now. Uh, just to be fair, um, in 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 every event uh, or or in any event, a bit of a of an I told you so. Um, but uh, interesting is though that uh, MUFG uh, is uh, is actually putting the hike uh, on the table for uh, for March, and that's the um, the biggest uh, bank in uh, bank in Japan. Um, used to be Tokyo Mitsubishi. Uh, they, they renamed all of that, um, and and they are putting the hike uh, on the table for March. So uh, that's keeping uh, everything very interesting. Um, but yeah, as as we've said, thirteenth um, to to be encircled in red on the calendar for uh, for yen traders and uh, Japan watchers. Uh, that's where we're likely going to to get a lot more, and uh, and we can expect uh, a lot more speculation then uh, around the uh, around the March meeting. I trust. Yeah, very much so. Uh, that was going to be my next line about. Uh... MUFG, um, they're getting set to uh, trade a bank, a Japan pivot this March. Uh, they're apparently going to build up uh, swaps receiver positions when rates rise. Mm. Um, so it's all uh, the snowball's rolling. They can't really stop it now at the moment, can they? It's gonna, no, no, it's no. They, be... I mean, it's um, for us, FX, uh, the, the, who are more focused on FX, um, it, it's still going to be. I, we are going to probably see a bit of speculation into the 13th, then a reaction on the 13th, and then uh, uh, building up again into the into the what is it 21st, uh, the meeting. Let me just uh, quickly check. Uh, no, on the 19th. So um, yeah, the, it's it's going to go in three legs. But um, what we probably can assume now with. Uh, um, some decent uh, uh, percentage probability is that we are going to find uh, rally sellers on 
on on uh, or deep bias on yen weakness uh, going into into next week. I trust. Yeah, very much so. And probably yeah, probably going to see yeah, the yen fairly well bid uh, going over the weeks ahead. Um, now we know that the BOJ can surprise; they have surprised previously. Um, but I'm wondering, this isn't one of those times where they want to surprise the market. Um, and the surprise would be if they uh, hiked rates in March. Mm. But will they lay the groundwork for an April or later hike yeah. at the March meeting? That's uh, what I'm thinking. Get Let the market do its thing uh, without confirming anything. Um, and then, as we know from central banks, it's not about when they actually do something. It's about the expectation of when they do something. If the Bank of Japan at their March meeting say, yep, we've had the wages or some wage data, we're waiting on a bit more, we are in a position now to think about hiking, that's when you'll get the the, the main move, if, is there, if there's going to be a main move. And all it will leave was a little confirmation move if and when they do hike. Yeah, but, uh, We've seen on the yields really that the market is preparing it, right? Um, yeah. Anything from the short to, to the longer end. Well, if you look at the, the, the 10 year JGB yield, you can say, like, well, nothing, nothing's happening at all. But that comes in, uh, in the, just those, those few BPs higher come, come when, uh, for instance, the, the, the US yields are, are rather capped or, or, or coming off just uh, slightly. They are, um, a bit more, uh, a bit more beat those yields. Uh, so uh, JGB is uh, a little more offered. Um, so, so that is something that we need to um, we need to 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 look at, and that's also why I'm saying that we're likely going to see some some buyers on decent dips in uh, in in yen pairs um, selectively as usual. Yeah. So, suffice to say for for you folks uh, watching the show, it could be even if they don't act in March, the March meeting could be more important <clears throat> than the meeting where they actually act um, if they tee it all up at this March meeting. But uh, we'll make those uh, further calls next week once we get all this uh, data, wage data and everything coming out next week. Uh, until then, just watch for these uh, sources, pieces dropping and here and there because it is getting the end moving. Um, right, over to Australia. Um, we have some GDP data out overnight. If I can find it, where we go in, there we go. So GDP, uh, I think this is the second meeting. I could be wrong, can't remember. Um, quarter on quarter coming in as expected. You're on here a little better than expected. Um, we've had RBNZ's chief economist Conway talking as well, saying that rates need to stay restrictive for a sustained period. Uh, he says he finds the declines in core inflation encouraging. Uh, then said the Fed cutting rates before the RBNZ could lead to weaker inflation, um, which is a bit of a subtle hint that if the Fed goes and they see weak inflation, that may will likely trigger them to go as well. Um, so a little bit of lead in. They all say they're not dependent on the Fed. <laughs> um, but they all know that uh, if the Fed goes, uh, the waves reach them not long after, Kay. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the funny thing was that uh, we're waiting for the Fed to act, uh, and then we wait to see what's going to happen to the Kiwi, and then we may be acting, and then it goes like they're not dependent on the Fed. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no one no one uh, follows the Fed until they have to follow the Fed. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> This is the main story. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just, uh, it's just a coincidence that I'm in the queue, you know. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, Germany's IFO uh, are uh, looking really positive at the moment. Um, in, uh, in January, they cut their German 2024 GDP forecast to 0.7% from 0.9% uh, that they expected in December. Um, now we're in March. They've cut that 0.7 to 0.2%. Um, I don't know why they don't just cut out the middleman and put zero and leave it there for the rest of the year. It's probably uh, more in line with what they're going to get. So a bit uh, bearish on the economy from the IFO there. Um, Eurozone uh, retail sales numbers coming. Oh, let's go look at the German numbers first. Um, trade balance. An improvement, and we've got a little bit of a pickup in activity. Better pickup in activity overall. Uh, decent move in exports and imports. 
so maybe, maybe the IFA will need to revise their forecast up after that. Um, this is for January data, so uh, a little bit of a pickup in activity in Germany. Maybe uh, some of those green, green shoots are poking through. We shall see. Uh, construction PMIs there, uh, not a big number for the market, uh, so don't take too much to heart there. Um, Italy doing okay, they're a bit softer. All the rest uh, went into contraction still. Um, retail sales from the Eurozone, eh, flattish. 0.1% uh, are the gangbusters there uh, year on year. Not as bad as expected, but uh, still a negative number. So no big signs of activity coming through the, from the consumer on that front. Um, back to yesterday's data, um, all the PMIs dropping further. Um, we had uh, Canada coming out. Uh, their PMI was a little bit better. Where is it? Where is it? There we No, where is it? Can't find it. Should be there, but it's not. Uh, anyway, oh, well, a little is, bit better. Isn't that one of those that, that doesn't show up on the calendars? No, well, obviously, yeah. <laughs> it's not on this one. Um, good job I wrote it down, eh? Um, anyway, it came in a bit better. 46.6 versus 45.8. Um, Woohoo, go Canada. Um, then we've got the uh, final US numbers there, uh, which showed uh, an improvement over the flash number and higher than last month, uh, or nearly higher than last month, 52.3. Composite was better. 51.3 um, was a flash number. So quite a big uh, jump over what was uh, came first hand. Um, then we got uh, the ISM numbers, uh, and I'll go back to the durables in a minute. Um, now, the ISM was a bit all over the shop. Um, the headline number came in softer than expected, uh, 52.6. Uh, so that was the first negative down on last month. Uh, prices pulled back as well from 64 to 58.6. Employment went into the negative. At 48, so contracting was expected to rise. Um, but then we got uh, a bit of a counter because new orders beat expectations and rose. Um, but the market really pretty much moved a bit on the prices, but probably more so on the employment number, with services being a bigger sector um, of the uh, services uh, number. Uh, in its connotations for the NFP, that going into a negative a couple of days before the NFP had the big ramifications. That's why we saw the dollar getting a bit of a spanking on that one. Um, durable goods revision, these are the revision numbers. They came in worse than the uh, flash numbers. Also factory orders dropping there more than expected. So that, again, was a bit of a negative slant into things as well. Um, okay, those numbers, I mean, they're still good, you know, still in positive. Uh, price is still, you know, quite strongly into the positive. Mm. Um, it's really that employment number that's uh, got the market a bit yep. worried. Yep, as I was saying yesterday as well in the room, it seems this week we are trading employment um, data, yeah? And, uh, well, right, uh, rightly so, because we, we are going to get a slew of, uh, of employment uh, indicators out for the rest of the week as well. Um, so that's the main focus this week. So this, this is always interesting when you're, when you're a trader to know what, what the market is, is, is actually focusing on, because we've got a, a, a heap of data coming out. And uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult to, to know which ones are going to be market mover. Um, and this week is, is for the US at least is clearly one for the uh, for the employment data less a bit less so on the um, perhaps inflation front. Um, we have seen inflation numbers coming out all a bit sticky, um, and now let's uh, let's see what the uh, what the uh, employment um, barometers are going to show us whether the weather is still uh, uh, clear or whether it's getting a little more cloudy. So um, that is it. But then. Again, we, we if you look at the moves, um, it's been extremely um, small, right? Um, okay, you got yeah. the yen moving, but uh, the, the yen is, is, is moving on its own as well. Um, but all the rest, barring a little bit of sterling perhaps being uh, being a, a, a tad stronger, the rest is still well, well, well within, uh, within the range. So the, let's say the employment uh, factor kind of balanced a bit of the, of the better, um, data out of the US, but uh, that's about it for now. And um, 
just uh, uh, again, as I, I I always look at how the uh, the the option volatilities are evolving, they are uh, just remaining very low, and uh, the options market is not worried about anything. Yeah, uh, Donny Yen uh, has picked up a bit. We're we're sailing at eight point two one percent at the moment. That's that been sub eight percent uh, for quite a bit. So we probably should expect that to pick up. Yeah, or stay elevated at least. Uh, well, probably through to uh, April, May, or when they finally decide to do something. But so uh, yeah, and again, what these vol vols mean um, is just give you a rough idea of how prices are going to move over any which way. You know, euro dollar, you struggle to get ten pips in an hour, um, but dollar yen's happy to move twenty, thirty pips around uh, in the same period. So you just look at that as for your expectations of how prices are going to move, um, not just for their option connotations um right well as you can see there we've got uh, a ton of stuff coming out today um boc on top of it all we're sort of uh, fallen by the wayside i'm not expecting anything from those guys um there's no there's no reason for them to side any which way although you know cuts being the the hot topic among central banks um we may get a bit more info on the uh, from the boc as to uh, whether everything is going the right way for them to think about cuts further um in their deliberations are you expecting much from uh, these guys today no i have no uh, i don't um uh we, we know the market is 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 not trading the canada uh, canadian dollar very well so any hint at uh, at a more dovish uh, tilt is probably going to weigh pretty heavy on the Canadian dollar, I, I'd say. Uh, but that's the only thing I can uh, I can really find in there. Um, the, the Canadian dollar is trading heavy because we've seen it's completely decoupled with what's happening in the uh, in in the oil market when when oil was rallying. Canadian dollar had a lot of difficulties to find its footing. Um, and and that's uh, and and that's about it. Um, I think the market will be looking for a confirmation that they can continue to sell Canadian dollar. That that is how I'm kind of looking at this uh, this meeting. But I'm not really. I don't really have a very strong base case for them um, on over this meeting. I'd say we wait and see attitude. Um, like all of them, data dependent, and um, and we see from there. But any anything dovish will probably be heard. A lot louder um, uh, by the markets, I guess. Yeah, I think uh, for this one, with everything else going on, power coming up later, and all the rest of it, I think you, if you're trading dollar CAD particularly, then look for just for any outside moves that maybe kick it out of sync um, with with what's to come. You know, if if dollar's looking a bit softer as it is today around the grounds, uh, and you get a big rally in dollar CAD over some comment or something then uh, that might be something that uh, traders decide they're going to tap on the head if it sort of moves it out of these recent ranges. So, yeah, look for look for any outlier moves potentially rather than uh, jumping on something, uh, particularly mm. from the BFC, because uh, it's going to switch right back to what power and everything else uh, going on, um, which we'll talk about, uh, obviously, in a moment as well. Um, ADP, uh, Lucas in our room, just wanted uh, reaffirmation of what I've been saying this week um, about, the, the importance of this number it's not so much for the importance of the headline number but for the details underneath um i'm looking at uh the fact that we've had uh, several pieces of data pointing to potential wobbles for the u.s consumer um this may be something that adds or subtracts to that um just the components of this data uh, whether we're seeing any movement in the consumer sectors like retail leisure hospitality that sort of thing um, could just be thrown up an indicator. It's not going to be a uh, you know one to one correlation for this one, um, but it just all goes in my uh, fundamental pot to see uh, what happens. Um, also, not on there is that today. I can't think if it's today or tomorrow. Is uh, uh, might be tomorrow. Challenge of grey layoffs. Um, I think that's tomorrow, which will tell us um, you know who's been laying off firms if that's big as well. They just put together all the numbers uh, that we hear on the on the stories, you know, uh, whoever it was, Tesla cutting and this firm cutting, Tyson 
crop cutting. If they're cutting US jobs, you'll hear tomorrow. about it in this report. But that's uh, tomorrow. Um, jolts, that comes up as well. Um, a bit lagging. It's always lagging this data by a month. Uh, so these are January numbers. Uh, but given what we saw the ISM, there might be a little bit of focus on this to see if it comes in much softener um, to show that uh, maybe firms are not putting out as much uh, hiring adverts as uh, previously um, if they feel like they don't need any more staff or can't afford any more staff they won't be advertising for staff so that's the jolts numbers coming up later um right we've got uh pal up as well he has the first of his uh, testimonies uh to the his bosses in uh, the senate and congress and whatnot um, the report was already out last week. His testimony was out last week, which is pretty much a rinse repeat of the last FOMC statement. Um, lots of chatter about what might come from Powell. The, probably the, the baseline for, certainly for me and, and I know for a lot of us, is that it should be just a rinse repeat of the uh, last FOMC. However, the risk is that he, given that we've had some time under the bridge, we'll try under the bridge since then, other data, new data, there is a chance that he may uh, wheedle into some of his comments, um, just a bit of an update based on what that latest data has been, if he wants to pass a message to the markets. On the other side, this is a political shindig. So, again, we're in an election year. Um, so expect some of the questions from politicians, which are usually, you know, pointless normally, um, to be with a bit of a slant towards uh, party politics on that front. Uh, Kay, you got any uh, big expectations for Powell? Um, actually, no. Um, I think just steer the course, data dependent. Um, but again, yeah, th there is perhaps a little bit of uh, risk building. Um, well, first of all, they, they had a sticky inflation uh, stuff, but then some of the employment, as we've already been repeating on, on, on every uh, flow show um, since, it, are, are sh starting to show perhaps a little bit of um, yellow or orangey, orangey flags. Is he going to talk about it? If he does, it could uh, it could send the dollar uh, perhaps a little lower. But I, I've, and I've got also the impression that's the way the market is looking at it. Um, the, the market is waiting for him to give that sign um, saying that, oh, yeah, we are looking at and perhaps this and perhaps that. So um, on on the uh, and, and as we've been saying, I've been saying it's an employment uh, employment or unemployment week. Uh, that may be the focus of the market as well through uh, whatever uh, the hours he may talk uh, today and tomorrow. Um, yeah. But uh, as we know already, the statement wasn't really anything uh, to to. Uh, to really comment too much about because it's just like, yeah, steering the course and uh, we will be patient and uh, we are data dependent. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I don't expect any change of, of rhetoric. Um, it's going to be full of jobs not done and such is alike. So, uh, yeah. But if he doesn't mention the weakness um, in jobs, or if he doesn't, uh, you know, comment on anything mm -hmm. that's not on script, uh, that may also be taken wouldn't say hawkishly, but non-dovishly by yeah. the market. So it could just not saying something can cause a reaction as well, uh, saying something. Uh, so we need to be prepared for that. Um, what else we've got going on? Oh, the UK budget is going to kick off shortly, uh, in about an hour or so. Um, I'll put a bit of a, 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 not a preview, but just a bit of a few thoughts in our chat room. I'm not expecting any big ways for the UK or for the pound out of this budget. Just in case you were wondering about that, it, it, again, it's an election season, so there's going to be a big slant towards that. Um, there's going to be a lot of politics involved, probably. Um, whatever the Chancellor does now has potential to be reversed or watered down if and when the new government comes in, depending on when that is. I think maybe the biggest take from this budget stuff is if afterwards it causes Sunak to call an election date finally which is what we're still waiting for um that's going to be based on the mood uh, of the budget how the public see this budget um just to go through the mechanics of it all the chancellor will step up he'll list out all his uh palaver he'll 
talk uh, a positive game, how we're probably in technical recession now, but his policies are going to get us booming. Um, it'll all sound wonderful and uh, jelly and ice cream. Um, then the opposition will shoot it all down in flames. Um, then the OBR, the Office of Bodge Responsibility, will come out and price it all up and tell everyone uh, they can't afford to do it or they can't afford to do it or it's going to create these fiscal waves or that fiscal waves. That's the sort of stuff that caused a big wobble when Truss and uh, Quirtang did their budget thing uh, September 2022 or late, late 2022. Um, so that might be something for the market to watch. Yeah. Um, Ryan, I've got, yeah, a, I've got a question yeah. for you. When, when is the OBR coming out with the, um, what, what, if they can afford it or not? They usually come out pretty soon after. Yeah, well, I thought um, today, right? Yeah, I can't remember because they they'll have it. They'll have all the budget in advance. Um, I can't I can't recall if it comes out the same day later on or if it comes out a, a day later or something. Um, yeah, I, I don't know either. And I so, um, and and if you and if you say, well, we we've been chatting about it in our in our chat room, of course. The, the Sunak, the possibility of Sunak calling and uh, 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 or putting a fixed date on uh, on the election when when would we possibly be expecting that towards the end of the week next week or when when i don't i don't know um if if they're gonna wait and see uh oh thanks gavin 2 p.m the obr will announce that um so that'll be about an hour after he finishes um it it depends if if sunak sunak probably wants to see the response so you know he'll be watching the presses he'll be looking for public opinions and stuff if it's taken favorably then it could be any time, but uh, that's that's just my guess. Um, I don't know what he's thinking of. Um, could be end of the week. Might be something like the weekend, because uh, you get a lot of opinion pieces at the weekend um, talking about stuff that's happened in the week. Um, so it could be after that that uh, maybe he announces something if he's going to do it. But that's just pure speculation on my part. Um, okay. And. Uh, I know Mark was talking in our chat room that uh, there's a lot of feeling growing that he may announce a May election. Um, so I think that's that will be it. If he if all this stuff is taken really positively, if everyone thinks, yeah, great, this is a reason to vote for the Conservatives, if that's what they think, then he's likely to call a sooner election than a later year one because he want to uh, try and use that momentum to uh, save his skin, which... Probably a lost cause at this point. Whatever, we, if they promise us all gold bars, we put, there's uh, they probably lose the election, so uh, it might not matter anyway. Anyway, that's UK election stuff, um, and uh, you don't have to sit through it, but uh, I will. Um, right, <laughs> what else is going on? Lots going on. Lots going on. Uh, Trump um, and uh, Biden are pretty much clear now for the uh, runoff, the uh, election to come. Um, Trump sailed through all his uh, primaries as did Biden so it's looking like uh, it's the rematch coming up from uh, the US elections so uh, that'll be a lot of fun I'm not worry about till later in the year um, just on the geopolitical front um, again not something major but I've just noticed a pick up in comments coming from Russian news agencies TASS in particular uh, yesterday, the, uh, they reported that the Russian Defence Ministry said they scrambled fighter jets to escort French military planes over the Black Sea. Um, the reason I point it up is because it's hitting the headlines. This sort of stuff happens pretty much daily. All this, uh, if it's not Russia flying over UK waters, it's uh, everyone else flying over Black Sea waters. The fact that it's coming up in more and more headlines um visible ones just shows the, the rhetoric that's been going on um over the last few days um russians foreign uh international director said macron's statement about nato soldiers in ukraine shows irresponsibility of european leaders and they are pushing the world to the brink of nuclear war again another test piece so the uh the pr machine in russia seems to have uh spun into action at the moment. So just keep an eye on that for risk trades and whatnot. Okay. Have you got anything to add on top of all that? <laughs> I, I wouldn't dare, right? I wouldn't dare to add anything on top of all that. Uh, we, can, we can talk about other stuff, but it, it's really not uh, not right now. Uh, I, mean, I think the, mo the most important for uh, 
our audience uh, here is that the NFP competition is out and uh, yes, you have to get your votes in. Get your votes in. I'll put uh, I'll put the link up there uh, when uh, K Man's having a look at the charts, and you can all uh, get your guesses in for that. Yeah, I've, right. I've, I've, uh, I've already well, put in my guess. I was the first one, so um, no uh, no expectations, no, no waiting for ADPs or whatever to. Uh, to, to put in the guesses, just uh, going for it. Exactly, exactly. That's the way to do it. Um, just a quick reminder that the BOC is 15 minutes earlier these days than it used to be. It used to come in at 3 o'clock, now it's at quarter to 3, because they want to stay out of the way of the uh, any economic data and whatnot, uh, as if anyone cares. But uh, they moved that uh, last month, uh, and that's the new time now forever. So just a reminder, in case, uh, in case you're late, and uh, you're having lunch and you miss it, all the fun. Right, let's go on. Let's start with, uh, have a look at Euro dollar. And um, just want to highlight, we have got a ton of options expiring again today between 108.30 and 108.70. Um, we've got some uh, eight and a half, just over eight and a half billion going off as all these option traders try and squeeze as much pips out of this uh, low vol as they can. Um, so yeah, it's, and that was a bit of a pickup because I did look earlier uh, this week to see if there's anything major for the rest of the week, and there wasn't anything overly big. But uh, it seems like uh, these positions are putting on fairly short term, um, so they're putting on being put on daily. So another big chunk coming in there. Um, so again, power starts right on expiry. So uh, probably going to see the price glued around unless we get any big headlines coming out. To, prior to that uh, but for now the, the the story is going to be pretty similar for a lot of pairs trading this today um, a lot of risk events to drop um, it's going to be can we move to some of the range edges some of the levels that need testing can we break those levels are we going to hold any breaks um, so we're still in the middle I'm still mainly going to look at 108 109 109 20s in euro dollar um, for the range and if we break out of that range, is it big game-changing news or is it just the market stretching its legs again? Um, but it's going to be difficult to jump on a move and think, yep, yeah, this is now a new trend and we're going to be off to pastures new. Um, it all depends on what comes and how it's assessed. So I'm not, uh, I've am not. got no big expectations for one direction or the other. I'm just going to follow the price action uh, in a lot of pairs and see what it wants to do. Uh, dollar yen, pretty similar. There's only bits gone. There we go. Um, we've had another move uh, on those uh, sources pieces down towards that prior low 109.20s, which is a bit of a level. Um, didn't quite get down as far, uh, but it's in the frame. If we get down there again, um, then maybe we're going to be looking at uh, a bit of a break. Um, I'm, I don't know about you, Kay. I might be getting a bit twitchy to just stick on a couple of shorts, uh, mm. a little short now and again, just to just to play the uh, yeah. this uh, rally sell mode that we might be moving into. Yeah. Um, but then again, Actually, it's, it's, mm, it, yep. it may not be a it may not be a bad idea. I mean, you know, you know, the best thing that could happen uh, today is that Powell actually does not give anything um, yeah. to to chew on. And we get a little blip back into the 150s. Your your the, the stop is actually so easy to put right now, right? Um, yeah. Had uh, uh, at least four or five tops in those in in that 150-80 zone. Um, adapt your position size. Do 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 smaller if you want to play it. But it but it's tempting, right? It is it is tempting. Uh, and if you want to steer away from uh, from the dollar, look at something else that may be a bit uh, a bit weak. Um, and why is not something like the Canadian Maybe. dollar, for instance? Um, yeah. or, or the Aussie, yeah, but the Aussie is, is I don't know, it's, it's, it's a strange one. It could be. Perhaps, perhaps even the Kiwi is better, but then you're struggling with higher interest rates as well if you want to stay short on it. Um, yeah. But then perhaps finally the Swiss yen, you know, uh, finally maybe the Swiss yen is, is going to be because it's, it's now trading well below 170. Uh, Swiss is actually again getting getting sold today. We had a little bit of a, uh, um, a setback yesterday on the Swiss pairs uh, because of the stocks coming off uh, um, 
I reckon, uh, but uh, it's it's again very very bit uh, Swiss very offered today. Get a blip there. This could be one of the crosses that you that you uh, can look at. Um, but if 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 Powell in in um, does give something to the market, yeah, Dorian could could actually get hit uh, because of everything that's now going on and people looking at what's going uh, what's going in uh, on next week. There's there's a lot of um, speculation and information coming out on a daily basis now and uh, where I was extremely neutral on the, on the yen. Um, uh, I'm, I'm starting to think it's perhaps not a bad idea to be long yen against something. Yeah, yeah, that was my thought for dollar yen, get a nice little rally up into the 150s and uh, maybe give it a little tap on the head. Got to remember though that uh, it's going to be triple, uh, oh, is that past? Is that tonight we get the triple rollover or is that on, a, on the, the weekend? Start? Yeah, we get the weekend tonight, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Then, then you pay for the for the for the weekend. That that is true. Um, if uh, I, I don't know for people who can trade options, uh, the problem with uh, with uh, buying downside in uh, in in yen options is a bit the same as also having a having a position. You pay away forwards. Um, so if you look at uh, doing an and the skew is very much for the downside as well. So yeah. if you if you're looking to do downside on dollar yen, it, it's still feasible, but um, you're going to have to look at the strikes a little further away. Um, if, if you, for instance, want to include the Bank of Japan, you're looking at uh, the first reasonable strike, I would say, is, is probably 148 or so. So that's still a bit away from where we are now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. But for now, I think, uh, you know, it might, I'm thinking that it might be worth uh, the cost to uh, sit in uh, some shorts if we get a good uh, bounce. I certainly wouldn't be selling it to down here, that's for sure. Um, anyway, that's uh, that from dollar yen. Um, oil and, uh, well, we can look at oil. Still making it hard work for buyers. We tapped up in that 80s area and then uh, got knocked on the head so that's back down again not coming down down too far but you know we had all those rumors about uh, extending production cuts and the like and still can't find a proper bid on that um so it's, it's not out of the woods probably geopolitical risk is still a big part or a large part of the bid in this um but also that manufacturing data just starting to creep back up again in the pmis and stuff potentially might make the demand side of things uh, look a bit better, but uh, still not a sideways action. Still very tightly contained, so there's really not not much direction to uh, be seen here. Um, but if things get resolved uh, and demand is picking up, then uh, maybe there's upside to come on the fundamentals anyway. Uh, gold, that's uh, sticking to its uh, near its recent highs. Uh, couldn't quite get to that spike high. Uh, well, I'm not going to rely on that high too much uh, but we got up close to it and uh, we're not dipping back far from it so that's keeping the move in play in this break in play that we had here um, so that's that's fairly bullish uh, Devej I know you're here there you go mate want us to look at gold finally got up we talk about sitting at 2030 for months and months and here we are over 100 bucks higher uh, in the blink of an eye uh, but that's what breaks do for you um, when you get these breaks um, as you can see, we broke above that 70 area, that prior high and this area here, held it, held it, broke it. So this is going to be a big support down here now, 2075, 2088, that former high. That's the uh, do or die number right now for this one. But for the rest of it, a bit of a similar situation to um, S&P. You know, when you break into areas that haven't got a lot of historical price history, you need to let the levels form up so i'd have a level roughly about there 29 21 19 20 uh, maybe up to those levels there 24 so a bit of a support area that's where the price has got to hold now uh, in in this area to keep this break alive back below there below 21 10 then maybe we're going to test a big figure and down here as for the top well we're just getting a few knocks of resistance coming in uh, but it's all short term so this high is obviously going to be the, the main watch point above. Um, if we have a test from here, maybe it gets to 35, maybe even 40 and holds, 
that will maybe show that we've got a bit more of a top building at the moment. But even if it nicks a couple of ticks higher, 42s, 43s, 44s, and pulls back a bit, that will tell you that uh, we're still willing to make that move higher. So, uh, yeah, I hope you make your money in this one, uh, Dervish. Uh, it's been a bit of a volatile one. Uh, and uh, it's always difficult if you don't catch those sort of moves. You might get a little bit of FOMO, um, but just let the levels uh, do the talking until you get something more significant. Um, uh, it was interesting. Yeah, yeah go on, mate. Yeah, if uh, if uh, Derej lo uh, looks at uh, Fibonacci, um, if you take the, the move from uh, December to February, that uh, that move down, and you stick a few extensions on that, you will see that there's one coming in around 21, 52, 53. So uh, uh, if you want to to have a level to the top side, that's that's one you uh, you may uh, um, have a look at uh, um, as well on the top side. So that just about gold. Yeah, move on. Uh, you can move on now. Yeah, thank you very much, mate. Um, I did see uh, one piece uh, of analysis coming up. Uh, well, I'll call it analysis. One headline that came up. Obviously, uh, we had that funky move in Bitcoin yesterday. Um, and uh, an analysis, someone uh, who does Bitcoin analysis, uh, that the price correction, this price correction here, which uh, was a 15% move, um, was just healthy consolidation. Um, I don't know anyone that can call a 15% move in any sort of market healthy consolidation, uh, but we had a blip in that. Just shows you how dangerous this uh, thing can be at times. Uh, we have come all the way back up again. Um, so maybe it was consolidation, but if you're getting 15% consolidations in markets, I have no interest in that whatsoever because I don't know anyone who can withstand a 15% uh, correction in, in any asset. <laughs> a healthy fat finger. A healthy fat finger. Uh, but anyway, fun, that was uh, fun and games last night for Bitcoin. Um, right, Kay, oh, let's have a quick look at the S&P because that... Uh, we're getting a bit more of a wobble in stocks at the moment. Uh, given the event-driven week, there's a lot of people who are uh, doing a lot of uh, positioning, repositioning, jiggling around, jocking around. Um, so we've had a bit of a carve up through some of the short-term levels, the ones that I was particularly watching um, to see how they would perform. Um, so that move yesterday pretty much carved through all of them until we got down near the big old 50-50 zone and we bounced just ahead of that. Um, right now, we're just knocking on the 5,100 level, the big figure. Um, so that's become a bit of resistance again, which will give all the sellers up here a bit of confidence. Um, we might be washing out this 5080 area. I might need to take that off my chart. Um, let's do that now, shall we, just for the sake of it. So now we've got definitely firming up this support in here. Shows you that just how the price action builds and now it becomes a bit of a bigger level, just like it. The bigger levels were building down here. Upside still needs to be defined on a bit more clarity up here. We're going to find resistance into this old point, and that's going to mark the top. That would suggest maybe then we're going to start breaking down some of these levels that we have as support. Or are we going to go all the way back up and uh, nick a new high or even kick on to further highs? But for now, this is confirming support. We need to see the picture up here define a bit more from there. Uh, but definitely you've got some uh, wobbles coming into stock markets. Maybe all now we're getting a bit of uh, vertigo kicking in, but uh, we shall see. We've been here before and then uh, all the sellers get confident and they get taken to the cleavers again. So uh, until I get confirmed resistance over a decent period of time like that, I'm not ruling anything out. Okay, do you want to have uh, a quick butchers? Yeah, um, it's going to be a, a very quick uh, overview uh, of um, what's happening. And uh, today, since we have the uh, the Bank of Canada, why not have a look at the dollar cat? Um, and uh, this is how it looks on my um, one of my shorter time frames. Usually, I uh, I look at dailies, four hours, but uh, and this is on the hourly because it's uh, it's nice and visual. Um, well, basically, it's a 135, 136 figure 10 for a starter. And then here, this is an interesting level here, 136, 20, 25. Okay, if, if that starts to go this afternoon, we're probably going to um, 
to need an extension to what uh, to what's happening in Dorakat right now. Um, we can see we're we're in a bit of an up uh, upwards move, um, despite really the, um, the 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 move higher that we had in uh, in in oil. Um, gas is moving up again, and um, yet the Canadian dollar can't find a bit. This is how the mood is right now in this market is is really a bit uh, adverse uh, against the uh, the Canadian dollar. So. 136, 2025 is the level here. 135, um, that is going to require, in my opinion, a very dovish power to, to break right now, because I guess we are already on setbacks going to find bits perhaps around this 135.40 in, uh, in the dollar cat this afternoon. Um, as the base case is for a neutral Bank of Canada, I don't, I haven't seen anything which which is going to push them to remain ultra hawkish. So it's going to be a data dependent uh, uh, market, I trust. And also the mood in the Canadian dollar is reflected in this Euro CAD. You know, Euro has been a poor child, whoops, uh, has been a poor child for, um, for a good while. And yet uh, we see those Euro crosses um, catching a bit of a bit. And this one is a prime example. Um, we we were in this channel. We broken we broken above through one forty seven. Um, that is now going to be your uh, your support into um, um, into and after the Bank of Canada, and then into um, we have ECB tomorrow as well. So this is going to be a big mover, or should be at least a big mover tomorrow. But look at this uh, one forty eight figure ten. Double action over there. Uh, it uh, it should be a decent level. We are trading 147.70 as we are now. Um, a move through there could uh, could see another big figure uh, on top. Um, because just just to look ten seconds ahead of the the ECB, um, I think it's a base case that ECB is going to just uh, continue um, to steer the the, the course um, because we also had like slightly sticky. Inflation numbers even coming down, but then they they were talking about those green shoots, and then you had the um, the uh, um, Germans apparently uh, showing just a tiny green shoot, perhaps. So um, Lagarde can hide behind that to um, to not be too dovish in uh, in uh, for the euro tomorrow. But um, okay, this one is a is an interesting one. One forty seven, the figure, and then. Um, as we were talking about these, whoops, no, I got to go back here. Canada yen, um, Canada yen, Canada yen, it is struggling. Okay, it's struggling. Um, one one eleven. I I'd say one eleven is uh, is should be one eleven figure ten should be a, a decent resistance. Perhaps already one ten sixty five. We're trading around. 11020 are we yeah we're trading around 11020 um if if the bank of canada if the bank of canada is dovish um 109 30 50 is very possible on uh, on on this cross okay so this is perhaps one that may come on the radar if we start to see more uh precise uh, um, um hints at the bank of japan possibly doing something next uh on the next meeting or if those wages are really good this is a potentially a cross that you may uh that you may have a have a look at okay um and if we get down there have a look at what's happening at 10960 10930s and uh then we're talking about lower levels here already a quick uh, look at the cloud yeah um that's coming in around, around here but that's not uh, that's not the major one in here i think um, it's it's if we start to get back below 110 and those 109 uh, mid 109s, okay, on the uh, on Canadian yen. Um, traditionally, have a look at our uh, at our Swiss. It is going and still going. Swiss got hammered again. We saw a little bit of a setback, as I said yesterday uh, afternoon, but the dips are still relatively shallow on this. And this, as I said, is one of my base pairs to measure the uh, the Swiss um, strength or weakness because it is the, the, the main trading partner, uh, Euroland, and also uh, an equal um, an equal percentage in their reserves um, than the uh, as the dollar. So Euro Swiss is really a very good barometer of, of what's happening in the Swiss. Um, and as I said, 
respect those levels here it's coming it seems to be coming we respect those levels here around 96 uh, 75 90 okay on the on the on the euro swiss right we could be there uh, at this day, at this rhythm, we could be there by the end of the week. But uh, uh, still, I would say um, I'm going to at least take a little bit off if we see it there and um, and relax a bit, see what the market wants to do into the SMB. I still think that into the SMB we are going to see a little bit of a pickup of that speculation. Although we see regular sellers in uh, in Swiss franc uh, nowadays, dollar Swiss unchanged, eighty seven sixty, eighty nine uh, eighty nine the figure. Um, that's going to be valid for the rest of the week, in my opinion, over the uh, over the US data. We, we have a lot of US data coming out. So this is going to decide on this dollar Swiss. Um, this is the picture that I'm looking at right now. I'm half hedged on my calls. And uh, if it goes through 89, the figure, I think we may uh, push higher into the SMB. And uh, last one, have a look at, uh, we are on our way, we are on a bit of resistance here in uh, in, in Sterling Swiss, but uh, it's been a very good hold of late, looking a little bit similar to the uh, to the Euro Swiss. And uh, unsurprisingly, because Euro Sterling is just fixed at 85 and a half right now, um, this has the potential for 114s in my opinion. Um, that's, that's still, um, yeah, that's still very possible unless we get something um, buried on sterling. Um, but uh, th th this looks still looks uh, relatively uh, relatively positive. And 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 just uh, and I'm going to finish on uh, on that and uh, giving it uh, back to you, uh, Ryan. Just one thing again, I'm repeating that when when you uh, trade and when you have a big week on uh, on the dollar. If, if your risk is you, you don't want to have too much risk uh, on events and stuff, crosses are something really interesting to, to look at. So uh, I would uh, I would really suggest to people to, uh, if you're a bit too dollar centric, to, to start looking at crosses because they can give you a little bit more joy in your positions and, and usually go a little slower than dollar pairs on, on data releases and things. Back to you, mate. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, good stuff as always. Um, right, hopefully that's got you all uh, set and ready for today's action. Um, I'll put the link to our NFB competition in the Zoom chat there. So have a crack, win a free month to the Forex Analytics platform. And uh, yeah, answers only on that tweet only, please. Um, Yep, yeah, Ellie, the show will be up on YouTube and whatnot uh, much later today. Uh, so you can watch back all our wonderful analysis, uh, but not too late. Otherwise, uh, it will be after the event. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming. Do trade safe this afternoon. Be careful. Um, if in doubt, stay out. And uh, we shall see what happened tomorrow. Have a good one, all. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.